the 2014 fall weather outlook combined with special El Nino weather coverage. Let's take a look at the equatorial eastern Pacific where we see those temperature anomalies associated with El Nino. About a half a degree Celsius to three quarters of a degree Celsius above normal. That's enough for a slight to low end moderate El Nino. But if you notice, a lot of the anomalies are off the west coast of the United States over towards the central Pacific. That's because the trade winds have blown basically all of these warmer sea surface anomalies westward and some of them have even broken off and headed northeastward towards the continent of North America. So this is bad news for the west coast because you can see up and down the west coast here from Los Angeles, San Francisco up to basically uh, Portland and Seattle areas westward towards the coast. We're not getting any better for drought. And in fact, things are getting worse. Most areas only seeing five to 25% of their normal rainfall year to date. And this drought goes a lot further back than just this year. Let's take a look at that El Nino scale here. The last couple winters have been La Nina's. Of course, La Nina below the graph, negative sea surface temperatures anomalies. Above the graph is positive sea surface temperature anomalies. And of course, the last couple winters, La Nina's weak La Nina's for the most part, resulted in a winter 2012-2013 being above normal temperatures below normal snowfall for the north eastern portion of North America. But the winter after that, 2013-2014, we saw basically well below normal temperatures, a well above normal snowfall. So La Niña's go either way. El Niño's, the last one we saw was winter 2009-2010, where we did see uh, above average snowfall, below normal temperatures in the eastern portion of North America. So what that basically means for us is we could see an alignment similar to this winter of 2009-2010. But before we get ahead of ourselves with thinking above average snowfall, early snowfall across portions of eastern North America, there's other factors at play. So one of the factors here across the west coast of the United States, we got all that warm water off the coast. They're gonna push that jet stream further to the north here. All the systems are gonna be riding well north of the drought stricken areas. So not much relief out here, but portions of the central plains here, a trough will develop and then zonal flow here in the east. That will result in tropical systems around the edges heading up the east coast of the United States. Weak systems for that matter, tropical depressions, tropical storms, tropical waves, nothing strong. And the same for Texas, we could get some beneficial rains here, similar to uh, what Tropical Storm Dolly did here in North Mexico near, near Tampico, where we did get some beneficial rains here as well. So look for that. And then later on in the fall season, as El Nino starts to kip, kick up a little bit stronger, we're not gonna be looking at anywhere beyond low and moderate. But we will bring the jet stream a little bit further to the south. We will bring some beneficial rains into portions of the Pacific Northwest, maybe as far south as Eureka, California, but it's really hard pressed to get that jet stream further south into the really drought stricken areas of central California. Here in the Intermountain West, we're basically looking uh, a little bit above normal for the precipitation here into the plains with that trough and continuing here across the east, the zonal flow, keeping things very seasonable for the fall season. So we take a look at, first we're gonna take a look at temperatures well above normal out west here, up and down the west coast, well above average. Here in the Intermountain West from about Wyoming on eastward, we're looking below normal, even southward down towards Texas, below normal temperatures, southeast looking about average. Here in the Great Lakes, about uh, uh, basically normal. And here in the eastern New England, southeast Canada, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, we are looking at above average temperatures as we get more of a southerly flow and you're on the back side of those high pressure systems that will be holding tough over the central Atlantic. So you'll be benefiting from some very quiet time conditions, although you will have the occasional tropical disturbance right up along the west coast of the subtropical ridge. So that is basically what we're looking at for precipitation wise. Of course, we're going to continue that trend of below normal precipitation in this basically the west coast here. A little bit above average here in Arizona, New Mexico, but then we get up towards the Pacific Northwest, below normal continuing, above normal central plains, north central plains for that matter, down towards Texas. 
southeast. We're looking about normal until we get to Florida, about above average, especially up into the Carolinas, slightly above average. Eastern New England, above average, and then up towards Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, above average as well. Great Lakes, especially the eastern Great Lakes and southern Ontario, we could be looking at a little pocket of below average. So possibly look for that in the coming months as we get that zonal pattern setting up with not too many large scale systems and storms providing too much in the way of moisture. So that's pretty much going to do it for the fall 2014 outlook. I will be releasing my winter outlook combined with special El Nino coverage very shortly in the next week. So look for that. But don't forget to like me on Facebook at MediaMark. Subscribe to me on YouTube at MediaMark.com.